Yo guys, welcome back to another Dunmachi Memorial Freeze video. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be going over... Uh, we're, we're going to be going over... We're going to be doing another Should You Summon video. I haven't done one of these in a while, mainly because the last three months have been anniversary, and they should, there, there was not a banner in the anniversary that you just shouldn't have summoned on. So there wasn't, there wasn't any need for, you know, Should You Summon videos. But we're back now. Hey, and we have banners, you know. Um, straight off the bat, before reviewing each unit, the fact that they they are dropping two free unit banners immediately after anniversary and immediately before season three comes out should let you know you should probably take these as bait banners. But we're gonna review the units anyway because you may be in a spot like me where one or two of these units may be like essential to your account. And I always say that you shouldn't summon based on each individual unit that's for outliers and when I say that I mean uh, units like uh, Anya, I forgot her name for a second uh, An the light Anya you know um, Aisha there's there are more okay <laughs> I promise you there are more but you know other than the outliers that are just gonna be super strong and can pretty much fit onto any team regardless uh, you should always sort of aim to go for what your account is missing, especially if you're free to play. If you're free to play and you're like, oh yeah, no, don't summon on everything that comes out, don't summon all the time. Like for example, this eyes, and <coughs> oh good lord, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, I'm sorry. This uh, eyes, I kind of need to summon and hope that I get one copy of this eyes because I don't have any units that lower water resistance on my account. Now, I have amazing water units. Uh, that do damage and you know things like that uh, but I don't have a single unit that lowers water resistance so I kind of need this eyes uh, to complete that which is why I'm gonna summon other than that I'm not summoning I'm not doing it I'm not gonna spend my iris when I know season 3 is coming I am gonna stock up on some paid iris though uh, anyway so we're gonna get into the reviews I'm gonna explain what they're good for what their skills do and then I'm just gonna give an opinion on each unit obviously I'm gonna skip the Armid. I will give a brief opinion right now if you don't have OG Haruhime the Armid is worth it her stats are trash because she's a welfare unit it is what it is but go for what she does she's an amazing support um, it's especially considering she's a welfare unit that just keep that in mind okay other units will surpass her but she does a collective a, a large amount collectively that other units do better individually uh, oh excuse me I elbowed my microphone anyway so we're gonna get into it we're gonna start with the eyes now immediately oh no let's not do that because that makes it too big and you guys can't see sorry the scale of my discord compared to what's on the screen for you guys entirely different okay so I'm gonna look on OBS uh, her strength stat is amazing. I mean, this is another uh, water eyes, so it's not like we haven't had one before. She is considerably different to the last one. However, let's look at the skills real quick. <clears throat> so, S A. I didn't have a brain fart there. I was just thinking. <laughs> uh, S A A O E Ultra Water Physical Attack, Ultra Penetration Rate, and Temporary Strength Boost, and Water Resistance minus fifty percent. This is a case of she will be fantastic uh, for seven uh, AOE seventh zones and things like that. The lower the the minus fifty percent wall resistance, you can't top it like that. That will be crazy for AOE water zones, but it's you can bet your butt that it's she's designed for war games. Let's let's call it what it is. Uh, skill one wall resist minus thirty five percent. It is an AOE. Guard rate minus 30%. That is another trick, uh, another trick, another indicator that she's designed for war games. She lowers guard rate. Now, in war games, you'll come across a lot of people that, that there's certain stats you focus on, and guard rate is going to be one of them. Most players higher rank are going to be wearing breastplates for the most part, which increase guard rate uh, as well. So, units with a guard rate reduction as an AoE usually tend to lean towards war games anyway. Skill two, another AoE. Fast high water physical attack with uh, AOE resist and single target resist minus 20%. Okay, I okay, sorry, on the skill one, I did miss the uh, gain two additional actions, which um, I've been saying that like, I really didn't want them to just stick them on every unit coming out sequentially after, but apparently it looks like that's what they're gonna do. 
It does, however, help counteract the RD somewhat or other KO resist um, units that people may bring to war games. Um, anyway, so skill two, it's a high modifier and lowers AOE resist and single target resist. This is somewhat countering stall teams, and I can hear the people know oh, why does it lower single target? Because counters counters single target as well. So if you increase your AOE and single target resistance, you're reducing the amount of damage you're taking from AOE skills, single targets, as well as counter attacks. Skill three, single target, high water physical attack, ultra crit, and for every single target resist debuff on enemy skill damage plus. 20% so basically 80% is tops you can go for skill free cool uh, passives fire resist counters do element water damage and uh, strength and dex plus 50% crit so I'm holding a pen I don't know why <laughs> uh, crit damage plus 15% and damage when guarding reduced by 30% aqua killer okay so what do I think in fact you know what I can do I can just quickly Close this and we can look at the previous war eyes and compare the stats. Now the new one has a higher strength stat. Now keep in mind, I actually have some CP into my eyes, not a lot at all, but still. So she outdoes the older eyes for strength. Uh, the older eyes outdoes her for agility, but the newer eyes has a higher dex, which means she's aiming for those crits to get that additional damage from the crits. Um, all in all, she's going to be a relatively decent water unit to add to war games just like basically all the others because water units seem to be the go-to if you don't have light units <laughs> um, removes agility index. I mean I don't see her replacing this um, eyes because of this what this eyes does is just too incredible anyway uh, where is that skill one yeah so lowers agi enemy agility and removes agility index buffs like that's just a killer for um, war games. I forgot where was it. Uh, it's kind of it's late for me. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, but saying that, we're going to move on to the next unit. So let's just bring this back up. Oh no, wrong one. Uh, and then scroll back down. Where did I put it? Here we go. Okay, so having a quick overlook right now at the stats on Luna. Good stats. Good agility. Okay, Dex. Good strength. Uh, great artwork. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, that laugh was so cringe. I'm sorry. I picked the pen back up. Habit. It's, it's fiddly. Anyway, right. So let's look at her skills straight away. Uh, SA Ultra Water Physical Attack. AOE. My head. Um, so another one that I would say is designed for war games. For every uh, physical resist buff, increased skill damage by 50%. Skill one allies fast counter rate heals plus 30%. Magic resist plus 35%. Um, self strength buff plus 65 percent that is great uh, so it's going to be a turn one case of if you set her to buff this will be the turn one and then turn two will probably be the uh, skill two I think I honestly I think there was a typo here I don't think her skill three is going to be AOE I think it's going to be single target but you never know uh, high water physical attack ultra uncounter rate temporary strength boost physical resist minus 30% counter rate and heals minus 35% that's going to be clutch for a lot of war games uh, reducing your counters and your healing basically cuts off a lot of your damage and well yeah obviously and a lot of your healing so you won't be putting out as much damage per turn and you won't be uh, regenerating as much per turn Skill free, high wall physical attack, ultra crit, and for every physical resist, the I picked the damn pen up. Uh, debuff on skill damage plus fade percent. There isn't really much to add here. She's quite a plain unit, I would say. Um, she's gonna work well with a lot of AOE war teams. There really is not much to say about it. They're all sort of leaning towards that crit and pen additional damage though. Uh, counter damage plus fifty percent. So they're all they've all got that little niche to them so far. But we're gonna just skip past her because I actually don't think there's much uh, of anything else to say about her. She's just a she's a good unit. Like she's not a great unit. But she's a good unit. And she'll probably fit well with a lot of other water teams and water units. So moving on. Okay, so sitting on the oh god, uh, I made too much noise there. Sorry, sitting on the Haruhime. Oh, um, <laughs> her strength stat is great. Her deck stat not so great. I mean, it's good. Like don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's crap. I'm just saying it's like, I mean, even her endurance is is reasonably nice as well. <sighs> Agility over 1100. Cannot complain about that. 
But if you see a unit with really high agility, it kind of indicates that they are aimed towards war games anyway. And it seems like most of these units are sort of aimed towards war games. So there is that. Uh, but let's have a look at her skills. By the way, this Haruhime does have my favorite artwork out of all of the units so far. So, uh, SA, Ultra Water Physical Attack, crit, uh, Ultra Crit Rate, Temporary Strength Boost, Allies Water Damage plus 50% uh, for 3 turns. That's good. That is really good. Uh, and keep in mind, guys, any units that are going to be good for um, war games, I will say, are still going to be... Um, uh, what am I thinking? <laughs> are still going to be good for AoE 7 zones. Sorry, sorry. Because I, I, if you hadn't noticed, I, I do use my uh, Winter Belt and... Um, Chigasa for AoE water, uh, water 7 zones and they're not even MLB and they do fine they don't do a lot of damage at all but that's probably because I don't have a water resist debuffer so uh, moving on skill 1 strength plus 30% water damage plus 30 oh sorry allies strength plus 30% water damage plus 35% for 5 turns gains 2 additionals ok uh, skill 2 AoE super this is the first one I've seen so far that has additionals and also has an AoE super. Uh, super water physical attack, ultra uncounter, temporary strength boost, allies 20% HP regen for two turns. That's going to be uh, kind of. That, you know, the regen is actually going to be more clutch than you probably realize in war games. But just having a super damage modifier alone will be helpful. Skill 3 single target, high water physical attack plus 40% per each self water damage buff skill and uh, with ultra penetration rate okay so she's gonna she's again she's aimed at um, war game and uh, she's you know, orientated towards AoE her skill 3 is gonna hit relatively hard like it's the same thing with um, who do I have completely maxed out Archer from the Goblin Slayer collab her skill 2 is her AoE super modifier, but her skill 3 still hits stupidly hard uh, with the same 40% bonus for each self buff for a rare rare. So these skill 3 units probably still will hit hard if you need to take them to a single target event. I just don't expect them to hit as hard as the characters that are designed to go to single target events. That seems like common sense, but it feels like something I needed to explain. <laughs> uh, fire resist plus 35%, counters and water element. Um, counters are water elemental, which is just a given. Strength and agility plus 30%, HP and MP regen plus 8%. That's going to be good outside of war game as well. Penetration damage plus 15%, that's great. Um, the artwork just does it for me, man. I love the artwork. But again nothing that's jumping out at me saying yeah this unit is amazing it's going to be great and i love that um water aoe is as strong as it is now because for a long time fire was like so strong <laughs> uh anyway moving on we're gonna go straight to the lena yes that's a double check make sure i remember the name uh lena's stats are let me just move this Lean, Lena has a triple S magic stat. Now that I don't think I might be wrong here, but I actually don't think triple S magic is that common. Immediately, that should tell you that she's going to hit stupidly hard. But we've finally moved on to a unit that's not specifically designed for war game. In fact, she excels at single target damage. Um, I will say this: she has a nice dex score. It, I wouldn't even pay much attention to the agility stat because in terms of PvE I, I'm i not really sure how it's calculated. I'm not even sure if, P, if agility is important in PvE. Uh, but we're going to move on to the skills. Uh, SA single target ultra light magic attack plus 80% per self magic buff and light resistance minus 50%. See right here we're looking at say Anya level damage um, if I'm not mistaken I think Anya gives herself a plus 90% uh, light damage buff so having the plus 80% per buff and then adding additional 50% I think she may potentially hit harder than Anya um, self magic 
dex and light damage plus 60%. That is amazing. And that dex buff right there basically ensures that she's going to crit and pen a lot. Now, all of that damage stacked up and then crit and pen, no chance, mate. Uh, gain three additionals, having additionals with an ultra crit rate. Oh, even it doesn't matter that it's low. Having the fact that she's basically just going to crit every turn. Skill two, single target, highlight magic attack with a magic resist and light resist minus 35%. So she's self sustaining, which means she literally, if you are in a situation where, say, it's a. Uh, <laughs> I drew a blank. It's a record buster that's designed for wall units, but they don't have any light resist. She could be taken and sustain herself quite well because uh, she doesn't require anyone to actually provide that support uh, in terms of resistance debuffing. <clears throat> Skill free, a single target slow super light magic attack plus 80% per each self magic buff and removes that buff after the skill. So a similar similar function to what Aisha does, which means when you're using her, you're gonna have to basically, your <laughs> your rotation for her is gonna have to be really repetitive. So like say skill, so it's got one, two, three, one, three, one, three, and then whenever you need to SA, SA. Um, this also kind of means that uh, Haruhime SA is gonna be wasted if you ever use her skill free because you'll remove it immediately. She will keep the dex and light damage buff, however, as it doesn't say anything about light damage being removed here. Uh, dark resistance plus 35% counters a light element of damage. Crits do an additional 20% damage. Penetration does an additional. Uh, if that stacks, that's like that's basically an additional 40% damage. I'm pretty sure she's going to hit so hard. Like she's probably going to be sitting up there for one of the hardest hitting single target users in the game currently uh i'm i might have to test that i might have to speak to a few people that i know are more are more versed in the game statistics and you know the calculations of all that thing all of those things sorry but that's where i'm leaning and out of every single unit thus far she has been the one that sort of only stood out as being a broken unit and potentially a must summon if you have the iris to spare if you don't Anya will still suffice, but if you end up getting Anya and this Lena for <laughs> you, you know, and take them to Record Buster, boy, your scores are going to skyrocket. But we're going to move on to the assists now, and I'm going to tell you right off the bat this, oh, sorry, I clicked it. This uh, Hestia right here is designed to be used with the War Game Team's Strength and Magic plus 15%. Is it 15? Yeah, it's 15. I'm, I'm reading it right there. Uh, it's because I'm looking at the camera and not the text. Uh, strength and magic plus 15%, war damage plus 20%. Uh, as much as I would say she's designed to be used in war games, she still is a great replacement for the Hephaestus that a lot of people are using. So if you do pull one copy of her, she is great. She is also a great supplement if you don't have any assists that provide, because I know magic buffing assists are kind of rare I don't have that many myself so she still is a great supplement for that if you want to throw her on a sack unit uh, moving on though because the assists really don't take too long to cover um, summer color seer I, I actually really like this artwork as well this she is not so much designed for I keep clicking them sorry I've re realized this they're already large enough for you to see um, magic and dex are pretty high and she increases 20% 20, 20 magic light and wind damage plus 15% so who do I have that she will fit on I mean if you MLB her and throw her on the Lena obviously that's what she's designed for but that is really really crazy like an additional 20% mag magic 15% light and then on top of that this magic stat with the decks yeah it's crazy anyway guys that's all of the units my final thoughts here are these none of these units are time limited you should obviously be smart enough to know that they're bait banners unless you have iris saved up enough to at least do a full rotation on the lena banner i would strongly recommend just doing the guaranteed steps and skipping um that's what i'm going to be doing obviously that's just my advice feel free to spend your iris however you wish that's just my advice that's why i make these videos but yeah guys 
I hope you have enjoyed the video. Make sure to like if you did, subscribe if you're not. Social media links in the description. And as always, guys, I love you, and I'll catch you later. That was an awkward wink. <laughs>